In this video, a complete crypto trading strategy in the simplest format possible. I'm going to go through crypto cycles, how to take advantage of them, how to actually trade them, indicators that I use, different parts of on-chain analysis, all boiled down in a very simple format. Check the timestamps down below for all of that and all of the platforms that I'm using and all of the indicators and everything else will all be linked down there for you. So check the description for all of that. The first thing we can do is get our charts set up properly so that we can actually analyze them. So we're gonna to go to TradingView. TradingView is completely free. I'll link them below as well. Just sign up with an email address. Most people will use TradingView to trade or at least just look at charts and analyze them. So come to TradingView once you have an account, just click search right here. And then I'm gonna focus on Bitcoin and ETH mostly just to make the points of this video because they have the most data. So Bitcoin will search for, just come for crypto right here. And then you either want the Bitstamp one right here or you want the um, the index from TradingView. So Bit Bitcoin all-time history index or Bitcoin US dollar from Bitstamp. These are the two that have the most data. So click one of these to go through to that chart and then we'll get set up with the chart. So the first thing we can do is put some indicators on the chart that I'm going to be looking at and explaining throughout this video. So this is the entire Bitcoin history. Firstly, what we can do is change the time frame that we're looking at to make sure that it's appropriate for us. So most of the stuff I'm gonna be looking at in this video is probably on the day chart and the week chart, just to show you some data. And then towards the end of this video, some more specific shorter term strategies. So what we'll do is go to Bitcoin USD, click here and we're on the week chart right now. So that's good for very long term trading. If you're looking at longer term cycles, you're gonna be wanting to look at the week chart or even the monthly chart. If we just click this, you can see now that changes. What has changed here? Each one of these candlesticks is now one month in length versus uh, what we had before was a week in length. So obviously with each candlestick, you're looking at the price action over that time. So price action over each month. Now you can see that that's very different to something like a daily candlestick where you see the candlesticks now are over a much shorter time frame, one day each, and you're much more zoomed in because you're looking at a much shorter time frame. So longer time frame, let's just look at one week. We can right click, reset chart view, zoom out right here, and this should be what it looks like. Now, if you aren't on candlesticks, come up here, click candles right here instead of a line. You can use a line as well, but candlesticks just give you a lot more detail. Now I have many other videos that go through TA and explain candlesticks. Again, I'll link them all in the description for you, but we have this chart right here. Now, what we want to do is make sure that we go down to the chart settings, which is this right here. Click on this and you can see that I'm using a logarithmic chart right here. Logarithmic charts are good to look at uh, when you're looking at long-term growth trends of anything, including Bitcoin and other crypto assets. But if you're trading and looking for price levels, you're going to want to use the regular chart right here. That is how you trade and actually take, uh, you know, trades on prices. You want to look at the regular chart. Uh, so as you can see, it's very different to the logarithmic chart. Logarithmic chart is looking at long term secular trends uh, over time. And essentially what it does is when the price gets higher, it compresses that for you. Um, so it looks a little bit different. So you can make sure that either on, on log if you're analyzing a chart over a long period of time or regular if you are trading and uh, need specific levels and areas where you want to get in and out at. Next, we'll look at some free indicators on TradingView. Here's how to get them set up. So we'll go to indicators here. And then what we want to look at is this one, which is Global World Monetary Supply M2. So you can search for this if you look at community scripts or technicals or just go to favorites. Look at community scripts and you want Global M2 and you should see it come up here. So it's this one, Global World Monetary Supply. You can favorite this. I'm going to click this on. And then I've got some favorites here, which I've had I've had before, so I can click favorites. We're going to look at global net liquidity. So we're going to turn this one on as well. You can also search for this if you just type global net should come up there. You can see it's this one. So these two are very important to look at for me. Again, not for short term trading, but for longer term trends. In this video, we want to analyze and understand where short term cycles are interacting with longer term trends. And that is where we trade and that is where we make the most money. And we need to identify that, which I wanna explain in this video. So we've got M2 Global and Net Liquidity. What are these? These are essentially ways to understand how supply and demand within the economy are being manipulated by central banks. The job of a central bank is to manipulate us 
to supply and demand. So do they want us to demand more? Do they want supply to increase? Or do they want it to decrease? There are two things that can happen. And along with that is the economic cycle and the cycle of asset prices as well. So we'll go through this a little bit more in depth, but these two things are important. What I want to explain here is that as net liquidity and global money supply is increased by banks and they push it into the market, they're looking to stimulate us to be economically um, empowered and grow the economy and do things. And so as that happens, asset prices rise as fiat currencies get weaker. Now, the opposite side of that is when they try and tighten the economy. They try and restrict us from doing things. They try and uh, increase the uh, price or, or the strength of fiat currencies and asset prices decrease. So I want to see these cycles here. This is global M2 moving up and global net liquidity moving up and asset prices also move up. Now, there are many other different you know, deciding factors here, but we need to make it simple for this uh, video. As you can see, as net liquidity rises, as M2 globally rises, then you get asset price rises as well. As these are drawn off, so as these come down, as net liquidity is reduced, you can see a reduction in M2 right here as well. You can see uh, Bitcoin came under pressure. You can also see as net liquidity and M2 were drawn off right here, you can see Bitcoin came under pressure. As it's risen here, and as net liquidity rose, so did Bitcoin. Now, this isn't, of course, a perfect correlation, but I just want to have that typical strategy in our minds is that as central banks try and manipulate supply and demand by manipulating their fiat currencies, that has an effect on asset prices as well. If we understand these cycles and know when they're occurring, we can have a massive uh, effect that can have a massive effect on our account and our trading. Next up is the one technical indicator we'll use for this strategy, which is the stochastic RSI. This is a momentum indicator. So we'll come to our trading screen. Uh, I use Bybit here. I'll leave a link to Bybit in the description. They give deposit and trading bonuses up to 30K. So if you are new or you wanna trade crypto, uh, might as well check out some deposit bonuses. I'll link the platforms I use down below in the description as well. So you can see the platforms for your region. But we're gonna come to indicators here and then just type in stochastic. If you wanna know how to use Bybit, if you are new, I'll leave, I'll leave uh, platform tutorials down in the description as well. But stochastic RSI, click this one on. What is this? So stochastic is a momentum indicator. Many indicators are momentum indicators. So we're looking at the price of an asset, but we also wanna look at the momentum of price changes because the momentum of something may change before the price actually tells you that it may actually start to go lower. So the price can still be rising, but if the momentum is slowing, it may be indicative of the cycle changing or just the market cycle, um, you know, over a short time frame changing and, and money is flowing out and you actually don't realize that because the price is still going up. So the, what Stochastic RSI does is take a momentum of another indicator known as Relative Strength Index, which is RSI. So really simply, you're just looking at the momentum of strength in the price. So we're gonna click this on, and this is down here. Now, very simply, you have a chart here from zero to 100. Zero to 20 is obviously on the low end, that's very weak momentum. So the price going down and very weak. And then 80 to 100 is very strong momentum. Uh, you're looking at you know the price rising and the strength and the movement in that price being very strong. Um, so that's a very simplistic view of it. So you may just think when the price is weak, I buy, and when the price is strong, I sell. That's not unfortunately what we can do now. That can work out a lot, um, but what we really need to understand is how it interacts with market cycles. So what we want to really look at is during the weak part of a cycle, can we buy weakness? And if we can, then let's do that. And when do we let go? We wanna wait for the strong part of the cycle when the price movement is strong and then fading. So we're trying to use this as areas where we think this is a decent price within this part of the cycle. I'll explain cycles in the next section, which is really important. But at a fundamental level, we want to make sure that if this is the weak part of the cycle, this is the strong part of the cycle here, let's not get caught out doing something we shouldn't be. So during a weak, during a strong part of a cycle, which is this, you see very weak price momentum. 
that's not good. So you don't want to buy that because you're buying weak momentum at the top of a market. During this, which is a you know drawdown in a bear market, what we want to be doing is if we have any weakness during a bear market, that's great. If we're going from bear into bull, we want to buy weakness during that time. But you don't want to buy weakness at the top of the market, which is obviously crazy. You want to be letting some go here. So maybe you want to be looking at this, you know, this strength momentum here to let some go if you've been buying in before that. So we have to use the momentum of the price to inform us, but also where the cycle is as well. So these two interact with each other. We have to know where we are in the cycle, which I'll explain right now. Um, and then we can use price momentum to actually get better opportunities to enter into trades. Next, we'll look at the market cycles. This is the absolute fundamental principle of this strategy. So we have a dichotomy here. We have two different things, and this is what we're taking advantage of to get the best prices for these assets. So the fundamental assumption that we're working off here is that we are buying assets with long-term secular growth. So BTC and put ETH in there as well, right? Because it's performed over multiple cycles. The fundamental assumption is that these assets over long-term periods grow. They grow in user numbers, adoption, amount stored in them, active addresses, which we'll look at all of these. So you can determine this for yourself as well. Fundamental assumption, the assets that we're buying are growing over time and will become more expensive. That's fundamentally the assumption. Then we can take advantage of these shorter term market cycles that are manipulated by central banks through liquidity and other forms of manipulation, which you can see here, which we went through. We could take advantage of those cycles with the fundamental assumption in our brain that these assets will grow out of those cycles. If you buy garbage, what's going to happen is the cycle will happen and that will happen. We don't want to get into those, which is why so many people focus on the larger assets because they have more confidence that they have that longer term growth. So what we want to do is take advantage of the bottom part of short term cycles to buy assets that have secular growth. And then if we want to take advantage of the tops of cycles to let go as well, then we can do that. Once we are confident that the assets that we have have long term secular growth and we can chart that, then we can take advantage with confidence of lower parts of the cycle and shorter term indicators to let us take advantage of those shorter term price movements as long as we know which part of the cycle that we're in and the asset that we're trading has that long term growth. That's what we uh, can take advantage of. How do we know that the asset that we're buying has secular long term growth? There are many different assets that have this Tesla, Apple, differing amounts, but secular long term growth nonetheless. For crypto, just look at the active addresses or active users. I'll link all of this data below and links to these sites. So what we can, what we can see here very simply, orange is the number of active addresses on the Bitcoin network and it's growing over time. So that's long term secular growth. You can see boom and bust cycles during bull markets. You have more active addresses and during bear markets, you have fewer. But the trend over time is that the low of these is getting higher. So you have secular adoption of this asset or this network. Same for ETH as well. And I'll leave all the data below. So what I want to really highlight here is secular long term growth, despite the cycles. Now I want to contrast that with this, which is economic cycles. Like I said, central banks will manipulate us to grow or contract and they want to manipulate the fiat currency to do that, right? So when the economy is growing, that's great. These economic indicators will show that up here and you're having a lot of economic growth. However, central banks don't want that to get out of hand. And so when you have high economic growth like this, they change their monetary policy and they say, whoa, 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 we need you to pull back a little bit. And so they create these downturns where they want to bring it back down to the normal level just to get a nice normal level of growth. So if it's overheated, you know that it may pull back. So what I want to look at as well here is these cycles and how they affect the Bitcoin price. You can look at this 2017 and 2018 right here. You have a boom in the economy where things are actually growing a lot. Now, how does that affect the Bitcoin price? 2017 and 2018, you have a huge bull market for BTC in terms of the price. Now, as the economy falls off a little bit away from this and it comes down, 
you can see that happens to affect the Bitcoin price into a bear market right here. Now we have the pandemic stimulus and economic indicators went to the moon pretty much as high as they've ever been. How did that affect the BTC price, which was 2020 onwards? You can see an all-time high for BTC. These uh, you know, macroeconomic cycles that central banks dictate and co-opt, they affect the price cyclically of assets. But long-term growth, they cannot, uh, they cannot manipulate over the long term. So take advantage of these cycles. If you're 100% sure that you have a secular growth asset, make sure to buy at the bottom of cycles. And if things are getting overheated, they are areas where you may want to look to sell. Here are three indicators you can use to check for bottoms and tops within Bitcoin cycles. Now, because Bitcoin is a macro asset, it is the macroeconomic cycle. You can't say it's affected by that. Bitcoin is literally just money. It's a financial index. And so it literally is the economic cycle. So once we know that, we could take advantage of them. This is looking to Bitcoin, Bitcoin completely free as well. I'll link it below. Great site. MVRVC score. It doesn't matter what it is. Just have to look at these cycles. In the green, these are buy zones at the bottom of economic cycles and at the bottom of Bitcoin cycles. These are areas where everything is just oversold and that is obviously the best time to buy. When the price spikes or the MVRV Z-score spikes is at the top of bull markets in this red zone, these are the worst time to buy and the best time to sell if you want to take advantage of cycles or if you're a long-term investor, just buy way more down at these parts of the cycle and scale out of your DCAs as you move up if that's what you want to do. Of course, you can just DCA over the long term as well if you want. So this is important, MVRV Z-score. We'll also look at CVDD. Again, it doesn't really matter what it is to explain it. I have other videos that go through that, which you know I'll link below. But what we can see here is it, it shows us the kind of bottom price, right? So you're looking at identify value of sorts of UTXOs within BTC. It tracks the cumulative sum of this value destruction as coins move from old hands to new hands. So essentially... This marks big bottoms in cycles. So you can see this part of the cycle, this part of the cycle, where price is just very, very low in comparison and you're getting a lot of capitulation. When you touch that part in the bottom of the cycle, they are the times to buy. Now we're going to look over to terminal price, which is kind of the opposite thing of, the, opposite thing of this, where you're looking at tops. So when Bitcoin price is top, these are the worst part of the cycle to buy and you might want to let some go here. If you're looking to trade shorter term to take advantage of these cycles, these indicators show you everything you need to know. Now, of course, if you're a long-term investor and you have a retirement fund that's 20 or 30 years down the line, kind of doesn't matter that much because you're expecting secular growth to continue, the price to move up in a financial index. But if you're taking advantage of cycles, this is the data right here. This is the macro cycle. And Bitcoin is just showing us where the macro cycle is going towards bottoms and tops. So all of this data shows us that and you can take advantage of these cycles. So when exactly to buy and sell? You want to mark out these cycles on the Bitcoin chart. And these are macro, like I said, these are macro cycles. Macro cycles come and go. And when you've reached a point where the macro cycle is at its low, Bitcoin will also be around its low because Bitcoin is the macro economy and is the macroeconomic cycle. So we want to look at these areas to buy and these areas to sell over Bitcoin cycles. However, we can also use them for short term trading to also use technical indicators. So, for example, if we know that we're in a part of the cycle that is the upswing, then that's very important for us. We can trade that short term, which I'll get onto into the next section. But this is my what I call chart of truth. It's essentially all of the Bitcoin cycles and how they've behaved over time. This is something that I've you know, drawn on here and we can see the Bitcoin cycle. Uh, now, I've put this in the crypto investor course, private groups. I often reference this in those groups. You can check out the crypto course. I'll link it below. It has 300 videos, goes through crypto start to finish. Um, and also uh, I update it completely for free with all of my latest research, um, my portfolio and everything. We have a big community there. So if you want to check out it is below. You can you can see all the uh, the lectures on there and all the videos. But this is the Bitcoin cycle. And so in this cycle or the macroeconomic cycle as it is, we know areas where prices are overbought and oversold, right? So during the low part of the cycle down here, 
we're looking at that is probably the bear market for most assets. During this part of the cycle, if the price is getting up here, we know that things are getting a little overheated. In the mid, you know, mid part of the cycle, we're looking at things probably mostly fairly valued. But if we're coming down from the top into the bottom, that's obviously indicating some weakness over time, right? And so you don't want to get long there. You don't want to be really bullish there. When you're coming down from a high, do you think that it's going to bounce or do you think you're going into a bear market? If you're coming from a low and you're moving up, this gives you much more confidence in trying to trade short term and trying to take advantage short term as well. So knowing where we are in the cycle is going to give you a massive edge about are you going long? Are you going short? Are you trading here or not? Right. So that is important as well. Just knowing this, having that underlying, knowing exactly where we are in the cycle is going to help you short term trading and long term trading. So you can use it both. So where we are right now is making this video. Seems like we're in a recovery phase, recovery phase right here, which is recovery from the low part. And so you've got to be bullish here and uh, trying to buy any weakness during this phase of the cycle. So these cycles have phases with Bitcoin halvings and the macroeconomic cycles as well. You can see how all these are working and look at all the other indicators I showed in this video that I've linked down in the description. During yellow and green phases, you definitely want to be bullish. During red phases or the drawdown phases, you definitely don't want to be too bullish. You just want to be very cautious during those times. So this is a price-based analysis, but also a time-based analysis. You can see each Bitcoin cycle is around four years. Each economic cycle uh, happens to be around that time as well. Of course, it can change. And so as Bitcoin moves out of each cycle, it's not going to be exactly the same each time. However, they do match up very easily. The macro and Bitcoin cycles tend to move in unison because macro is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is macro. It's just a reflection of what's happening in the world economy. Um, so we can see that this yellow phase after each drawdown is a recovery. And then the green phase is, is what should be the bull market, um, you know, as it turns out. So we know that during yellow and green phases, during the upward swing, we can definitely be bullish. And during any red phases. So once you're getting to the top of this green phase, which usually lasts about 12 to 18 months, that's when you really shouldn't be looking for new aggressive longs here. Unless something changes specifically in the market or anything, but we're just taking a you know, a normal cycle uh, to trade here. So anything here is just aggressive longs. When you're getting to the mature part of the cycle up here, you don't want to be taking aggressive longs. And it's the same for selling as well. If you have Bitcoin, you don't want to be selling it towards the bottom of cycles. You want to be selling it towards the top of cycles. So use those to your advantage. Now, the other thing is here, taking advantage of the short term. Knowing where we are in the part of the cycle is important. This data is also massively important. During bull markets in Bitcoin, during recovery phases and uh, recovery phases and bull markets, you get drawdowns and Bitcoin is a volatile asset. So what we can see here is that even during the most aggressive bull markets in Bitcoin, it can regularly draw down 20 to 30 percent plus. During the early phases of Bitcoin, you had some really bad drawdowns. During the 2017 or 15 to 17, you didn't really have many, but it was still regular, very regular 23, 25% drawdowns. And during the last part of the cycle or the, the cycle before the last bull market, you had 38%, 50% drawdowns. Now this, take this out because that was the pandemic. So that's a black swan, but you can see 25%, 30, 30 plus percent drawdowns. Take advantage during that part of the cycle. You're in a bull market. You are in the recovery phase of the cycle in yellow, which is after the bear, and you're getting a 20 to 30% drawdown that must be taken advantage of to go long during that part of the cycle. So during the recovery or expansion phase of the cycle, they are when if you see 20 to 30% dips uh, in normal market conditions, they are to be bought because they are the opportunities to buy. So taking advantage knowing where we are in the cycle and then take advantage of short term price movements if you want to trade shorter term. If you're dollar cost averaging, you're just buying at cheaper prices at that point. Now, if you want to take advantage shorter term, we can use these two things. Firstly, where are we in the longer term cycle? And secondly, can we take advantage of any shorter term price movements? So here's how we can do that with the indicator that we looked at earlier. First thing is, where are we in the Bitcoin and macro cycle? 
we are right now as of making this video in a let's say recovery recovery phase maybe not a bull market but it's the positive phase right so it's the positive phase when we're looking to be positive and buy and take risk because we're taking risk when risk is at its cheapest so we're taking risk here when it's at its cheapest and we're looking to be aggressive and buy in this part of the cycle during the other parts of the cycle where things are topping out we don't want to be taking risk this is where risk is at its most overpriced and that's where we want to be selling risk we don't want to be buying risk when it's expensive we buy risk when it's cheap and sell risk when it's expensive we want to take advantage of that so right here selling risk right here buying risk now we go back to the chart and we can see the two boxes that i put on these are the areas where we want to be buying risk this is the bull market top you want to be selling risk here let's use the short-term momentum of trade to understand how we uh, trade prices so for right here maybe you were accumulating in the previous um you know bear market or the previous accumulation phase that was the risk on phase we can see price momentum moves up somewhere around here you're looking potentially to let some go because this is the uh, RSI showing us that price momentum is extremely strong. Now, if we look into the RSI right here or the stochastic RSI, we can see that it stays here for a very long time. So what I would suggest is maybe you don't want to sell when the price movement gets right up here, but you want to wait until the momentum is starting to weaken. So right up here, what I would say is the price momentum is strong, but that's because you're in a massive raging bull market. Now, what you can see is the price momentum doesn't actually weaken until this point here where both the stochastic and the indicator have actually crossed over and are now moving towards weakness. So you don't sell when it's up there. You sell when it's becoming weak out of that. So what you uh, probably could have done is sold right about here and actually a lot of people sold here. A lot of long-term investors who were buying at, you know, four, five, six thousand decided to take profits when it was a 10x, you know, from, from three or four thousand. So that's when they were selling. Now, you would have missed out on this, which is the absolute pico top of a bull market, but no one can time the market that well. If you were buying risk on here, you would have made some decent profits if you'd sold any anywhere around this this level, right? But during this time, this is not the time to buy and, and buy risk when it's expensive. You can see that the price momentum has crashed. This is not the time to buy when price momentum is falling off a cliff. All of this, you stay out the market uh, and you just don't get involved. This is the top of a market and so you don't buy risk at that point. Now, as we move forward, we have this part of the market, which seems to be the cyclical low. If we actually move back, you can see we're somewhere near the cyclical low at least in the Bitcoin cycle and macro cycle, seems to be changing at this point. Risk is a lot cheaper right now. So again, we want to wait for the stochastic and the, the momentum of price to tell us when's a good time to get in. Let's look at this right here when price uh, momentum is extremely low. You can see this is the, um, the sell-off and we're buying around 20,000 Bitcoin right here. Was it, the, was it the absolute bottom of the market cycle? No. But there was a, it was a good time to get in. And a lot of people bought Bitcoin here, which is why the price rose up to 24, even though it was still a bear market, because people were looking at this saying, risk is cheaper, you know, fairly low um, towards the bottom of the cycle, and the price momentum is very weak. So they're buying risk when it's at, at its cheapest. Now, if we fast forward and you bought half of your stack here at 20K, I think you did okay. As we move on, we see another piece of weak price action. This is after the FTX blow up, and that was the bottom. You would have bought at 15K, 16, 17K. So now you have a, let's say, 18, 19K average price at the bottom of a bear market. Why are you buying here? Because you can see we're at the bottom of the cycle with secular growth in Bitcoin, but we're at the bottom of the cycle, and we're in the buying phase because risk is cheap, and we're seeing price momentum very weak. That's when you're going to get your best buys during the bottom of the cycle when risk is at its cheapest. And as you can see, now we have very strong momentum. Now, I would not be selling here, even though the momentum is very strong. Why? I would actually be buying this here. I'd be buying any weak momentum. And that's because we are in the buying phase right here. 
So if you get a drawdown of 10, 15, 20% in bull markets, they are to be bought during this phase of the cycle. So it's all about where are you in the cycle and can you take advantage of the best prices during those cycles. If you're looking for even shorter term trading strategies or how to take advantage of trading futures and leverage, this is very risky, but you can take advantage of these ups and downs within shorter term cycles to do that. Um, you can use you know platforms to trade with that. I have other videos for that, which I'll link down in the description. The Crypto Investor course has entire sections on shorter term trading and trading futures as well. So you can check out those videos down there. Check the link to Bybit as well if you want to get that deposit bonus and other platforms all linked down below. I'm James, it's Money ZG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.